The overall goal of this procedure is to transplant mammary stromal cells and epithelial cells to study the effects of stromal epithelial interactions on tumor formation following transplantation. This is accomplished by first harvesting tail tissue and extracting donor collagen from C57 black 6 mice. Donor fibroblasts and epithelial cells are next isolated and cultured from normal and or MMTV PYVMT transgenic mice on the C57 black 6 background. The cells are then embedded into the collagen and plated onto tissue culture plates as circular plugs. Finally, the collagen embedded cells are transplanted into the fat pads of the inguinal mammary glands of the recipient mouse. There are several advantages to using the system over existing approaches such as generation of conditional knockout mice or transplantation into immunocompromised mice. One advantage is that the system is relatively easy to establish. Another advantage is that the recipient mice have an intact immune system, allowing researchers to analyze the role of specific molecules in stromal epithelial interactions during mammary tumor progression. Demonstrating these techniques will be Diana Lambert, a research assistant from my laboratory. After sacrificing five to seven mature normal female C57 black 6 mice using approved IACUC methods, harvest the tails and soak them in 70% ethanol for 45 minutes to sterilize them. Dry the tails with tissue paper, wrap them in aluminum foil, and store them at minus 20 degrees Celsius until needed. In a laminar flow hood, using scissors, first cut the tip of the tail off, then split the skin at the tail root and peel it away from the tail. Remove 0.5 to 1 centimeter from both ends of the tail and divide the remaining tail into three or four pieces. Dissect the tendons from the tails and separate them into individual fibers using a scalpel or razor blade. Place the fibers into a small weigh boat. Next, transfer the tendon fibers to a sterile container and wash with sterile distilled water. Then aspirate off most of the volume. Pour the remaining water containing the fibers into a weigh boat and then transfer them to a 50 milliliter conical tube containing 35 milliliters of glacial acetic acid, diluted 1 to 500 in sterile deionized water with penicillin, streptomycin, and amphotericin. Place them on a rocker at 4 degrees Celsius for one week to extract the collagen. Spin down the debris in a tabletop centrifuge at 3000 G's at 4 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Transfer the supernate into two polycarbonate tubes adapted for the Beckman 50.2 TI rotor and spin at 35,000 G's and 4 degrees Celsius for one hour. To concentrate the supernatant to 1 to 2 milligrams per milliliter, transfer it to an UltraCell 50K Amicon filtration unit and centrifuge at 3000 RPM for 15 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Repeat the spin until the volume is reduced to 5 to 6 milliliters. Transfer the filtrate to a sterile conical tube and save at 4 degrees Celsius. Check the protein concentration using a standard Bradford assay. The purity of the extract can also be checked by resolving a sample on a 6% SDS polyacrylamide gel. To isolate donor mammary cells and fibroblasts, sacrifice age-matched 10-week-old female normal or PYVMT transgenic mice whose tumors are evident and palpable using approved IACUC methods. Make an upside-down T incision between the nipples of the thoracic and inguinal mammary gland and pull the skin flat back to expose the mammary glands. Remove the mammary tissues and mince into small pieces using a razor blade or surgical scissors. Prepare 100 milliliters of an enzymatic digestion cocktail refer to the written protocol for detailed instructions. Incubate the tissue in the cocktail overnight on ice and then for three hours at 37 degrees Celsius. 
Add 5 milliliters of PBS containing 10% fetal bovine serum to each sample and centrifuge at 1500 RPM for 5 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Repeat this wash two more times. Resuspend the cell pellet in 10 milliliters of DMEM containing 10% FBS and antibiotics and plate in 10 centimeter dishes coated with collagen type 1. Incubate the cells at 37 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. Separate the fibroblasts and epithelial cells by selective trypsinization. Fibroblasts are more loosely adhered than epithelial cells. Check for fibroblast detachment under the microscope after 2 minutes in trypsin. Cells should be floating in suspension or rounded up while epithelial foci should still be adhered to the surface. Replate the suspended cells onto collagen coated 10 cm dishes and repeat the selective trypsinization process until fibroblasts and epithelial cells are completely separated. Check for cell purity by immunofluorescent staining for epithelial markers such as CK14 and CK18 and fibroblast markers such as alpha smooth muscle actin. For one graft, begin by mixing 100 microliters of collagen with 25 microliters of setting solution in an Eppendorf tube. Please see the written portion of this protocol for the setting solution details. Pipette the sample up and down to mix thoroughly. Add collagen or setting solution at 5 to 10 microliter increments and mix thoroughly until the phenol red dye in the mixture changes to a light pink to orange color, reflecting a neutral pH. Keep the mixture on ice to prevent polymerization. Remove cultured fibroblasts and epithelial cells from plates by trypsinization. Count each cell suspension using a hemocytometer. Pellet the cells, then resuspend them in complete medium to a concentration of 100,000 cells per 100 microliters. Mix 250,000 stromal cells and 100,000 tumor cells in a separate tube. Microfuge for one minute at 1500 RPM, then remove the supernatant by pipetting. Add 50 microliters of the adjusted collagen solution to the cells. Pipette up and down to disperse the cells evenly. Pipette the cell suspension into a sterile 6 cm tissue culture plate to form a circular drop. Incubate the graft at 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes to polymerize. Gently add 5 milliliters of complete medium by tilting the plate and slowly pipetting the medium into one side. Tilt the plate around until the medium covers the graft. Incubate the cells for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius, then transplant immediately. To surgically implant the cells into mice, first fabricate a thin glass rod by heating a glass pasture pipette using a Bunsen burner. Using forceps, stretch the end of the pipette out to 2 to 3 millimeters in thickness. Let cool, then sterilize the rod in 70% ethanol. Sterilize surgical instruments and gut sutures by autoclaving. Anesthetize the recipient mouse with 2 to 3 percent isoflurane. Perform a toe pinch to check for the proper level of anesthesia. Lay the mouse on its back with its nose inside the isoflurane dispensing cone and immobilize the limbs with tape or other removable adhesive. Remove the hair with a chemical hair remover such as Nair. Wipe the area clean with water then disinfect with ethanol and betadine. Next. Hold up a part of the skin by the mammary gland using blunt forceps with one hand. With the other hand, use fine surgical scissors to make an upside down T incision between the number 9 and number 10 nipples or the number 4 and number 5 nipples of the inguinal mammary glands to expose the mammary glands. Make a pocket incision under the lymph node or mammary artery with small surgical spring scissors. 
Using forceps, remove the collagen graft from the tissue culture dish and drain the excess liquid by gently dabbing it onto a sterile wipe. Slide the collagen graft completely into the pocket using a thin glass rod. Use number two gut absorbable sutures or wound staples to suture the skin flap. Let the mouse recover in the cage. Monitor the mice twice weekly at a minimum palpating for tumors. Sacrifice the mice when the tumors reach one centimeter in diameter, then harvest the tissues for analysis. Extraction of collagen protein from 5 to 7 mouse tails yields approximately 1 to 1.5 milligrams per milliliter in a 6 milliliter final volume or 6 to 9 milligrams of protein. By Kumasi Blue staining, bands corresponding to 90 kilodaltons and 130 kilodaltons are detected in lanes loaded with samples extracted from mouse tails, indicating the presence of collagen type 1 and procollagen respectively. PYVMT carcinoma cells and fibroblasts can be distinguished by differences in cell morphology and expression of specific epithelial and mesenchymal markers. PYVMT carcinoma cells are identified by cobblestone shape and co-express CK18, a luminal epithelial marker, and CK14, a basal epithelial marker. Mammary fibroblasts are larger cells with a spindle-shaped phenotype and express high levels of alpha-SMA. Transplantation recipient mice are sacrificed when tumor diameter reaches 1.0 centimeters in diameter, or approximately 60 days. While transplantation of PYVMT cells alone results in palpable tumors after 30 to 40 days, reaching a mean tumor mass of 0.382 grams at 60 days, co-transplantation of PYVMT carcinoma cells with mammary fibroblasts results in a mean tumor mass of 0.628 grams, indicating an enhancement of tumor growth by fibroblasts. Following this procedure, other methods such as drug treatment can be performed in order to answer additional questions such as determining the role of targeted therapies on stromal epithelial interactions during mammary tumor progression.